This is the Framework 16, Framework's new laptop and the big brother to the modular and upgradable Framework 13 I took a look at last year. I thought their first laptop was impressive from a repair and upgradability standpoint, being one of the only new laptops to support upgrading and replacement of the ports, RAM, SSD, Wi-Fi cards, speakers, display and battery. I thought it couldn't get any better than that. That is, until I read this new model even has a user replaceable GPU, and that's not the only new upgrade as we're soon to see. Framework has lent me this laptop for the video, but had no editorial input and didn't provide any payment. What they did provide was the merch that comes with the pre-ordered models. This includes a poster, patch and plenty of stickers along with the usual documentation. This laptop can be ordered completely assembled or as a DIY version. Mine being a custom shipment means that some things may be different to retail shipping versions. Included with mine was a keyboard, four spaces, two of which are black and the other two color shifting. These spaces are used between the keyboard on the top deck. Also in the box was a numpad and two LED spaces. These are similar to the other four, but these two light up and can be programmed to display different things. We'll have to see how that looks later on. As all these parts are modular, they can all be purchased separately, depending on your preference or requirements, just like the ports. For this laptop, we have two USB-A, two USB-C, DisplayPort and HDMI. But there are many others available for sale, including some by DIYers or third-party vendors, because Framework have made this an open standard, not proprietary, so anyone can make an adapter. Also included is a screwdriver and spudger combo for repairs and upgrades, as well as the 180 watt gallium nitride power adapter. Underneath that is the star of the show itself, the Framework 16. Once we get it unpacked, we can take a proper look at it. Before we dive into the hardware, we should quickly take a look at the software. This unit is running Windows 11. However, this laptop has driver support for various Linux distributions, such as Fedora and Ubuntu. If you're setting up any Windows 11 PC and like me also don't want to sign into a Microsoft account, simply attempt to log into a suspended account like a at outlook.com and enter anything in the password field. This should trigger the all too familiar oops something went wrong message. Clicking next completely bypasses the login screen. Once into the OS we can see this laptop's specific hardware configuration, consisting of an AMD Ryzen 7840HS with Radeon 780M graphics and 16 gigs of RAM. Made from aluminium and plastic, this laptop weighs in at 2.4 kilos with the GPU fitted or 2.1 without. This model also features six interchangeable ports and a 16 by 10 screen that measures in at 40 centimeters corner to corner. On the back of the GPU module is one permanently attached USB-C port that can be used for display output. The remainder of ports is up to you. Each adapter uses a USB-C interface and most can be installed in any slot. However, there are a few exceptions when it comes to display output adapters and charging. But do you know what I haven't seen before? A modular top case. Unlocking the two levers allows all the individual components to simply slide out. Each component is secured with magnets and connects to the computer using pogo pins, not cables. That doesn't mean it's just easy to replace, but also totally customizable. The row of pins in the mid-frame provides the ability to move the keyboard and trackpad to several locations, whether for personal preference or to make space for another component. There are quite a number of top case modules at launch, including a macro board, colored spaces, and LED matrix displays. Unlike the colored spaces, these ones light up and can be programmed to display various things. The software can be found on the main support page, along with repair manuals, setup guides, and drivers. The control software is currently in beta, and it want to be for how buggy it is. I even got an error just opening it. But overlooking the buggy LED matrix control software, it can animate these panels with patterns and text. A feature that is currently nothing more than a gimmick, but I'm sure more features will come and hopefully provide a better use for these panels like CPU and GPU usage. They do automatically time out after a short period, so I'm not sure what use they could practically serve. 
but if you're a fan of RGB lights, there is a configuration to suit you. The only real area this laptop struggles in is the keyboard. It's fine, but not the best I've seen. But do you know what's better than a modular top case? A modular GPU. The base model lacks any dedicated graphics card, but if you decide you want one after purchasing this laptop, you can just install one and it's plausible that we'll see upgradable GPU modules in the future. Removal of the graphics card can be done by unfastening just six screws, four of which are for the interconnect cable, after which the GPU literally just slides out of the laptop. Even if you're not planning to upgrade, just think how easy it'll be to clean out the fans. This module contains the Radeon 780M graphics card and system fans. Models without dedicated graphics have a shorter module, two system fans, and 33 cubic centimeters of space for tinkering and potential mods. Removing the graphics card will cause the laptop to use the integrated graphics. Each model has its own interconnect cable, the basic one only utilizing one of the two motherboard's connections. To access the remainder of the internals, the mid-frame must be removed. 16 screws hold it together, which is significantly more than the framework's little brother, but a trade-off worth it for the extra modularity. After all, these screws are all labelled and captive, so you don't have to keep track of them as they won't fall out. Lifting up the mid-frame reveals the internals of the Framework 16. It looks very similar to that of the Framework 13 and features the same upgrade-focused motherboard, and battery held in with screws, not adhesive. But there is one difference with this motherboard, and it's not just the extra cooling, but something hidden under the SSD. There's a second smaller 22 by 30 mm SSD slot for another drive. While the mid-frame is removed, we can see how the modular GPU fits inside the laptop. The fans also provide air to the CPU heat sinks on the left and right sides, while exhausting heat from the dedicated GPU out the back, pulling fresh air in from the top and bottom. The 85 watt hour battery comes out just as easily as everything else, and the upgradability continues with removable RAM. All the replaceable components inside this device have a QR code that will link you to the repair guide on Framework's website, just in case you don't know how to do any of these procedures. As this laptop won't be getting upgraded today, it can go back together. There is a numbered order that the screws are supposed to be tightened in to evenly distribute pressure, like when you tighten a wheel on a car. I can then reattach the dedicated GPU and install the top case modules I see fit. And we're done. So this is it, the Framework 16. They've really outdone themselves with this one. They took the most repairable laptop on the market and made it even more modular, even more upgradable, and even more powerful. This laptop is designed to be taken apart, repaired, serviced, and kept running for as long as possible, with repair manuals and spare parts available from day one. It's open to third parties and DIYers, allowing them to make expansion cards and other modifications. It's kilometers ahead of the competition in this regard. If a small tech company can make something this modular, it shows you just how much other manufacturers simply don't care about sustainability or repairability, or are just intentionally making it harder to repair the things you own. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.